today uh, I'm very uh, honored to be invited as uh, a keynote speaker of the for policy 2022. My name is Noboru Koshizuka, a professor of the University of Tokyo, and also a chair of Data Society Alliance. And today, the title of my talk is a data-driven society toward the democratization of innovation. And this uh, show my short biography. I'm uh, Nobu Koshizuka. I'm working as a professor at the University of Tokyo. Uh, my specialty is the uh, research of uh, computer science, especially the uh, operating system, uh, computer networks, uh, interactive systems. And recently, my research topic is IoT, uh, Internet of Things, uh, smart city, and data related uh, platform system. So, and in these years, uh, in these several years, I'm working on building a, a new data sharing platform, uh, which name is uh, uh, Data EX. Uh, in this talk, uh, I will mention about the uh, Data EX later. And uh, uh, part one, part one of my talk is about the era of data. Uh, today, I would like to say now, now, now is the era of data. The Japan government proposes Society 5.0 as a vision of future digitalized society. 1.0 is a hunting and gathering world, and 2.0 is agriculture world. The 3.0 is the industrial world, and the 4.0 is uh, information society, and the Society 5.0 is a, a new society of the future. And so, 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 what is a Society 5.0? And in Society 5.0, Japan is proposing cyber physical world. Cyber world is a world developed on digital platforms like internet and the metaverse. And the physical world is our physical real world. In Society 5.0, both are connected with each other and this will improve our quality of daily life. And from the standpoint of view of digital technology, I think now is the era of data. Uh, for example, uh, since about 2000, uh, it has been the era of the internet and the mega platformers like Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, or Microsoft, Alibaba, Baidu, Tencent, and so on. But in these several years, we are stepping into a new era, uh, era of data. Uh, internationally, uh, there are many projects uh, developing new uh, data distribution or data sharing platforms. The right side of this slide shows some logo of uh, some example of data platforms. Uh, in ICT industry, the most competitive area is now data. So data sharing, uh, data distribution, data exchange platform are very hot topic now. So now is the era of data. So there are many data-driven innovation uh, in Japan and also in the world. Uh, this slide shows some example of data driven innovation in industry. The, for example, contracts, this is a remote operation and the remote monitoring example, and smart agriculture, this is also data driven, data driven agriculture, IoT, smart greenhouse, and so on and so on, and automatic uh, equipment monitoring in factory and plants. And in this next slide, Amazon Go rubbish collection, welfare application, and emergency medical application, business optimization, smart maintenance of infrastructure, uh, healthcare, logistics, smart building, smart house, uh, tourism, transportation, assistive technology. So, so there are so many innovations using uh, data, uh, so, so data-driven innovation. So, so next issue is a data platform and the data spaces. The, there are uh, so many uh, good data-driven innovation. Then the many people think that data is so important that data should be enclosed in the company. So data is enclosed like a silos of data. This slide shows there are four data silos and there is no data sharing, no data exchange beyond the companies. Uh, but for more efficient and effective usage of data, uh, we want to disclose the data. So uh, we will have a data platform for sharing and exchanging data. So in Japan, 
uh, there are uh, already many data platform for uh, each industry domains, for each domains. This uh, shows a house map of domain specific data sharing platform. This slide shows the logo of some uh, data platform in Japan, for example, a data platform for national government open data, data GoJP, a local government open data, VRED, uh, personal data platform, information bank platform, data of public transportation, manufacturing, academia, geography. Uh, there are so many data sharing platform already in Japan. So, so I would like to mention one example, one example of open data in Japan, uh, data.go.jp, data.go.jp. This is a, a open data catalog of national government of Japan. Uh, this, was, this was started about 10 years ago. The number of data sets is, uh, was, was at that time 10 years ago. Uh, the number of data set was about 10,000. But today, this is uh, increased progress, and Data GoJP is issuing about 23,000 data sets. And this shows the number of uh, local governments uh, engaged in open data in Japan. But today, 1,270 local governments in 1,788 are uh, already publishing open data. So this is about 71%. So, 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 so many local government are publishing now uh, open data. But, but we have already had uh, so many data platforms. Then so we are facing a new problem, new problem. In Japan, there are so many data platforms. So how can we search a data set from these many, so many data platforms, more than 1,000 data catalogs. How can we get the data set from this uh, data platform? This is a new problem. So, so uh, we would like to uh, integrate, or we would like to federate these data platforms. Such kind of large data platform, we call this Japan Open Data Space, uh, integrating more than 1,000 data platforms. This uh, show an example of federated data catalog systems. Uh, this was developed by NII in Japan. Uh, already at this point, about uh, 160,000 open data sets are collected from more than 400 local government open data catalog and more than 700 academic database. This is available uh, already for the public and uh, this is one of the uh, largest data catalog in Japan already. And this kind of loosely coupled, uh, distributed, and federated data platform is called as data space. Uh, this concept was firstly uh, proposed by uh, academic papers uh, by Google researchers. But today, uh, data space becomes the mainstream of European large scale data platform. The data space is a loosely integrated data platform for ICT system and also data driven business. And this is featured by a several points, the distributed multi stakeholders, data sovereignty for each stakeholders, trust of user and data, flexible access control, and standardized API and data format. In data space, we do not collect data into one centralized database. The data will be managed by each data holders locally and in a distributed manner. But using federation technology, a user can access data uh, as a single unified platform virtually. Uh, in Europe, uh, development of uh, data space has already begun in various uh, industrial fields, such as agriculture, manufacturing, energy, and mobility. And also in Japan, METI and the digital agency have begun working on the uh, Japan version of data space. Next, I'd like to talk about Data EX, a nation level cross industry data exchange platform. The goal of Data EX is the Japan data space. It is a national level cross industry data exchange platform. This is the infrastructure of data driven society. Data EX is a social deployment project of Japan data space and DSA, Data Society Alliance. Uh, this is an organization uh, driving the development of Data EX. 
This slide shows the web page of our Data EX project. The vision of Data EX and the Data Society Alliance is to realize a world of data driven innovation. The goal of Data EX is the Japan data space. This slide shows the concept of the Japan data space. And in Japan, and as uh, presented before, oh, there are many domain specific data platforms. So our mission is to federate these multiple data platforms uh, within specific field. In Data EX, the most important technology is connector based federation technology. Uh, this uh, shows uh, in the left side, uh, for example, your own data platform. Uh, this may be domain specific uh, local data platform. Uh, and this may deal with the local API and the local data format. Uh, but on the other hand, on the uh, right side, the cross domain global data space like uh, our data EX. In this platform, standard APIs and standard data format are used. So uh, connector component uh, will connect both of them. It stand between local data platform and global or data EX. The, this is a tiny software module like a wrapper uh, module. And it translates local API into standard API, standard API into local API, and also local data format into standard data format. And uh, on the contrary, the standard data format into uh, local data formats. Uh, such kind of function uh, this connector uh, is uh, provide. This slide shows the detail of the connector based data space architecture. In this data EX, uh, data in the data distribution package format is input in this data space. So uh, there are many data uh, in the standard format in this data space. Uh, this slide show an example of data transfer transaction of data uh, data X. The from user B to from uh, uh, from user B to user A data X is transferred in this slide. Uh, user B put uh, their data, data X, uh, into this data space, and uh, user B can set up access control based on authorization mechanism. And another user, uh, user A, uh, make a request to get uh, data X. Then the data space uh, authenticates the user A uh, on the basis of this authentication. Access control list mechanism allow or deny the access by this user A. Uh, to uh, data X. Uh, when uh, user A is allowed to access uh, to the uh, data X, uh, this request is operated and uh, data X uh, will be transferred to user A. Then uh, this transaction uh, is uh, success and uh, this transaction is recorded to the uh, transaction record database uh, in history management function. <clears throat> And in DataX, there are many other components like ID provider and the resource discovery component, the history management component, uh, authentication and authorization function, and uh, domain vocabulary registry component, and, uh, and so on and so on. And we are planning a DataX ecosystem in our data space. All the uh, main uh, specific local data platforms are connected to uh, data EX data space via connectors. Uh, data EX data space also connects many smart cities and many other applications, many other specific data platform. Also, we are planning to connect data EX data space into uh, several uh, European data space, uh, such as Gaia X and IDSA and Fiveware. And this has show a structure of our uh, Data uh, Society Alliance, uh, DSA in short. The, I am a chairman of this organization and uh, Mr. Okuisa and Mr. Manu-san are responsible for the management of uh, DSA. And the, we have about uh, 200 uh, members, uh, companies and the local government and also individuals and all of these members are collaborating with each other. And now we are aiming to establish Data EX in the near future. Uh, next year, uh, 2023 is a very important year because uh, we will launch uh, this uh, Data EX in this uh, next year, uh, 2023. 
Uh, the next, I would like to talk uh, our vision, and I would like to discuss our vision: um, democratization of innovation. <clears throat> Uh, this is a definition of innovation. There are many definitions of innovation, but uh, in this talk, uh, innovation is a, a new and changed entity realizing or redistributing values. Uh, this definition is derived from IOC standards. I think this is a very no normal one, very normal uh, uh, specification. And this uh, shows an example of recent to well-known innovations, very big innovations. For example, the uh, vaccine of uh, COVID-19, self-driving car, uh, generative AI, smart city. All of these innovations are all uh, data-driven. If we do not have big data, we cannot make uh, this kind of innovation. So, so, so in data-driven society, data access is one of the uh, most uh, important necessary condition for innovation. Uh, and the most important social problem of this point is only small number of very special people can access big data. This is a very important problem. And uh, the only way, the only way to create innovation is many e trials. If we make many trials, many fails, then we can get innovation. So, uh, so this is because uh, we cannot know how we get innovation. If, if, if we know how, how to get this innovation or uh, how to get this success, this is not an innovation. Rather, this is a very, very simple improvement. So for innovation, the most important point is we cannot know, we cannot know how we get uh, innovation. Uh, we do not know how is very, very important point. So, so next question is how can we help or promote or innovation? And the typical answer is uh, decreasing the cost of trials. If we can decrease the cost of trial, we can make many trials. So, so this decreasing the cost of trial uh, very important. Yeah. And also, this is the only way uh, to help uh, innovation. So in data-driven society, decreasing the data access cost uh, is a key issue for innovation. So data infrastructure for data access support uh, is the most important uh, infrastructure. So, so we, for example, DSA and Data EX, uh, we uh, would like to realize democratization of innovation by providing uh, such data infrastructure. Uh, this uh, means not only big companies, not only rich people, not only government, but anyone can use data. Then anyone can get innovation. This is a very important uh, point, I think. And uh, last vision I would like to discuss is uh, autonomous decentralized society. The in society 5.0 or data-driven society in Japan, we are aiming to autonomous decentralized society and not a centralized command and control society. In such autonomous decentralized society, individuals share data on the earth and uh, of society and act on their own initiative by analyzing judging and self-determining their activities. In such society, a mutual cooperation, dialogue, and solidarity are very, very important and necessary towards the uh, realization of uh, social values. Uh, for such society, a data sharing platform is the most basic function. Uh, this is because uh, we do not have data we cannot make a correct judgment and decision. So from the point of, uh, from the standpoint of view of democracy, a data platform is a very, very uh, important function. So finally, uh, this is a summary of my talk. Uh, now uh, is the era of data, uh, data-driven society. And the data platform is a basic infrastructure in the data-driven society. And this data platform will realize uh, democracy of innovation. 
And uh, the data platform is the basis of uh, autonomous, autonomous uh, distributed society. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. Hey, um, thank you very much, Professor Koshizuka. Um, so we have a uh, time available for um, asking questions and also um, some discussions or uh, some of the issues uh, you mentioned. Um, maybe, uh, yeah, from uh, the beginning, I, I'd like to ask you um, some questions about your talk. Um, I think this idea of um, the democratization of innovation and also the um, autonomous decentralized society, um, these are very um, interesting and also um, in a way very stimulating ideas. Um, I think there are many um, challenges in um, implementing these ideas. And I just would like to ask you, what are the key challenges we need to address in implementing uh, these ideas? Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. And I think the, the the first point is the democracy of innovation. I think this the key point of this democracy of innovation. I think that yeah, data platform that everyone can access data. Uh, so so how to assure this condition is very very important. So so the open data activity. But now the open data is very very limited only to the public social data. But in, for the innovation, we need much other kind of data. So how to share for many people? Oh, this is very important uh, condition uh, and important point for, 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 for the democracy of innovation. And but to, to, to implement such as the large scale of data platform, it is very hard to really implement the large data space. For example, the, we are uh, now, now developing and building the Data EX the Japan nation level data platform uh, for federal type. But, but in reality, the, the most of data is all uh, distributed for each company or each association, all the style of data. So how to connect, how to federate uh, the technically and also socially, uh, so su such kind of activity is very important. So the how to break the side of data, uh, this activity is very important for the democracy uh, of innovation in that uh, data-driven society. And the second point, uh, the uh, autonomous decentralized society. I think Japan, Japan is the most <laughs> uh, decentralized society, most most the less. Uh, command and control society, uh, but in in this case, uh, yeah, data is very important for the autonomous because uh, everyone uh, must uh, get data and analyze data and judgment make judgment and uh, some decision, and ev everyone do such, such kind of things. And this is an autonomous point. But autonomous 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 society is, I think. Uh, the decision is so slow and decision is so gradual. But in normal normal situation, autonomous is and this uh, distributed society seems very good. But uh, for example, now is the uh, age of the COVID-19, that's a very, very emergency, emergency time. So how to react to emergency or uh, so, so so, so COVID-19 and war is a uh, warfare is a very, very emergency. So how can we react to such kind of uh, emergency in the autonomous decentralized society is very important point. But in case of Japan, the reaction for the COVID-19 is very autonomous and decentralized, <laughs> but and, and the government do not have so 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 much so so good leadership. So, but 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 uh, but uh, but but very 
uh, we we are dealing with COVID-19 very good as I think. So in case of uh, uh, autonomous distributed uh, uh, society, the, the data sharing is one important point. But another point is how to react to the emergency in this kind of society is uh, another problem, I think. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, then perhaps I'd like to invite uh, questions from the audience. Yes. Um, sorry, microphone. Uh, thank you, Professor Koshizuka, for your uh, talk today. Um, so when you were introducing the data space initiative, you said that similar initiatives exist in other countries, such as the EU, for example. Uh, so my question is, um, I know that Japan has several uh, frameworks for data sharing with the European Union. So are there any vision about trying to integrate those kind of platforms on the international level? Mm. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. So, so yeah, yeah, we and the, I, I think Japan and the Europe is uh, approach is very similar. The federation approach uh, and the data space, the the concept of data space uh, is shared by uh, Europe and also in Japan. So, so now our organization DSA has already have a, a co connection with GaiaX and IDS and Fiverr. So, the, so the, our system uh, integrating the fiveware platform, and also we also we have also uh, ex have an experiment to connect our data ex platform and IDSA uh, International Data Space Association platform have already have uh, experiment, but 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 in the future in the future I think this kind of data space will occur. Also, yeah, already in Europe and Japan, and also in China and India and the United States. Now, Japan and the EU is one to one connection, and and if many many countries have started to establish such kind of data space, I think we need an international organization or in the international framework for the data space. Uh, for the world, global framework, I think that the United States, China, Europe, India, and other uh, Asian countries, African countries. So, and the standard API, and the standard data format, and the standard framework of access control, authorization, authentication. Such kind of the framework is will be necessary in the future. Okay, thank you. Yes. So uh, thank you for your presentation, Professor. Um, so I have two questions as a follow-up to your uh, explanation. The first question relates to the concept of cybersecurity, especially in a what, what you describe as a federated data environment. Uh, I think the discussion on cybersecurity has not been elaborated so far. Maybe you could uh, explain about the concept of cybersecurity, how to like, um, you know, preserve data privacy, how to protect the data in case of like, let's say attacks by unscrupulous actors. Mm -hmm. And then the second question that I have is about the idea of what would you describe as the silos of data across different corporations. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I'm wondering is whether companies in general are willing to mm -hmm. pull their data and create a platform because there are certainly concerns about protection of trade secrets. Uh, you know, certain data could be considered as sensitive, that could be considered only proprietary for the corporate interests. So I'm wondering where is the boundary between uh, allowing the data to be shared and also protecting sensitive data that could pertain to the company's trade secrets. Uh, thank you, Professor. Yeah, thank you very much. The 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 first question is about cyber security. I think that cyber security is very very important. And uh, but but this cyber security problem is a common 
for for all all application in digital uh, technology or uh, uh, networking system. So so I think this kind of uh, data sharing platform or data federation platform problem and the uh, cybersecurity problem is another problem. So then we would like to discuss uh, the the different discussion, but uh, but very difficult point in the data layer is uh, the privacy issue the culture and the regulation is all different from country to country this is a very important i think that the the concept of the 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 privacy and the culture. I think the European culture and the Japan culture. I think the China and the United States are all different. So how to integrate, uh, or how no, not to integrate, how to federate uh, the different concept of the privacy and also for, for security. That I, I think the technically the problem. Yeah, the technical problem is very important, but the technical problem is so common. But uh, uh, in case of data, the social problem. Uh, is also also social problem is necessary, so so the the pri privacy the regulation issue and security regulation issue all uh, different for country to country. So, but we would like to federate the country to country the globally. So so this is I think a very important point, and uh, the second point is the size of data for the company. He, the company have uh, many top secret, uh, very very secure information, but uh, but uh, but our concept of uh, data sharing, uh, the data sharing does not mean uh, open. <laughs> so 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 the so, so point to point data transaction is also data sharing in security in security or in keeping uh, privacy or secret. So so but but uh, uh, the. On the basis of the on the basis of authorization, on the basis of authentication, the the company to company, we would like to transfer data so securely. Such kind of infrastructure is uh, very important in this uh, data sharing platform. So sharing means uh, also including the open data, but also the how to securely exchange the secret top secret data the point to point the company to company is such kind of infrastructure we would like to uh, provide so so our infrastructure data ex have a, a data market so 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 the, the data market deal with a secret da secure data and selling and buying uh, company to company the such kind of infrastructure is also necessary for this uh, data uh, infrastructure. So, so, so the data data space uh, uh, does mean not only open data but also uh, data market. I think I think data market is very very active in I, I think the China. I, I think the the, the China is the, the so 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 the, the pioneer of the, the data market and Japan is so 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 I I think that. So the, uh, the, our platform, uh, the, our idea, uh, including the such kind of uh, uh, top secret, no, not a top secret, but the, the not not open the data company to company. The, yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, any other questions or reactions? Yes, please. Okay, uh, thank you, Professor, for your interesting talk. Yeah. My, my question is just very simple, because uh, you mentioned uh, innovation requires uh, a lot of trials, and uh, many trials means a lot of cost. So in your opinion, uh, what is the best way to lower the cost of uh, all those trials in order to achieve an innovation? Thank you, Professor. Mm. I th I thank you very much. Thank you for your question. I think the the for the trial of innovation there are so so yeah many many kinds of many kinds of costs I think, <laughs> but and uh, the cost of the data data access is one of them only only one of them, but but uh, but in the in recently the many kinds of innovation is uh, depending on data and big data for example the the vaccine of COVID-19. This is very, very data-driven development. 
And uh, yeah, of course, uh, artificial intelligence, AI, machine learning, that needs uh, this is a very data hungry application. And so data is necessary for the uh, recent AI. So, 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 so the, my opinion, my discussion is uh, in data driven society, the, the cost of data, cost of data, and also the, the cost of computer, the processing power is also very important, but the, the how to access data, uh, such kind of data cost is very important. For the uh, innovation in data-driven society, if if we are not the, the data-driven society, data is not so important. But uh, in the near future, I think data is most important uh, issue. So 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 data data how to decrease the data cost for for everyone is uh, very important for the uh, everyone innovation. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Any further comments or questions? Hello, uh, can I ask a question online? <laughs> uh, sure, yes. Yeah, uh, this question is uh, not related to social development. I would like to ask about the web uh, three. Uh, as you know that the, yes, mm. yeah, uh, I wanna know, uh, do, do professors think that the mm. uh, Japanese government is currently now is focusing on the development of the Web3. So this Web3 technology can make Japan shine again. Do you think, do you think so? Oh, it's a very interesting question, but a difficult question there. The Web3, I think it's a very important for the, the my, my final uh, the discussion, the autonomous uh, decentralized society. The Web3 is aiming the, the decentralized uh, the society. Um, yeah, blockchain or DID, and and I don't know why the metaverse is also one of the Web three technology, but but the, basically the Web three is the autonomous, the decentralized uh, technology. So it's very good, but but I think it's a little bit now the, the very near to the research, but not to the in industry. I think it, it's a a little bit far from the uh, real uh, implementation. So, uh, so I think it takes more five or 10 years. I think the Web3 is, is really implemented in, in, the, in our uh, industry, I think. So, so after five years, 10 years, yeah, Japan may, 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 become, may, may shine again using Web3, but, but it's a, uh, the five or ten, ten years later, I think. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, there's a question uh, from uh, Zeynep. I think now she's in London. Oh. Oh. Um, so one question. Do you think if the current data monopoly of the Western big companies can be challenged or balanced in any way by coordinated actions such as open data space? Challenge mm, or balance. Yeah, 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 I, I think so. But uh, mm, yeah, the, the, my recognition, the, for, for example, the monopolization of data, I think uh, in the world, I think there are much and much and much more data in the world. I think the especially physical data in the, for example, cyber physical world. The but the large, the global platformer are collecting the the data from the the cyber area. I think, but in real society or in our planet, there are more and more and more data, and I think. Uh, for example, um, I think the GAFA or such kind of uh, global mega uh, platformer uh, owning about one or two percent, only one or two percent of the real data. I think that this is my impression. But uh, what if we have one or two percent of data? This is a very, very, very big platformer. But uh, other 99% or 98% of data is all distributed and all silo. 
side of data. And each small company or individuals and uh, small organization are owning. So, so the most useful problem, the the I think the not, not the global platform, but the the small how to break the the small silo and how to integrate the such kind of small silo is I think very important. And also the open data activity is very good for 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 balancing the the yeah I think the the, the for for the monopolization of that kind of big company I, I think so. Uh, mm. And also, and also, but but all the many many data is not open and free. About the, so so how to buy, how to sell. So 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 the data market is very very important. Not not the open data, but the, the how to implement the data market is also a very important problem for 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 for, for breaking the monopolization. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we still have some time available for questions or comments, feedback. Okay, um, so yeah, this is a conference, um, particularly now that we are um, organizing this conference in Asia Pacific. Um, so I'd like to ask you uh, what we can do to facilitate um, data sharing exchange uh, cross-border, uh, let's say in Asia, where there are many different kinds of um, political, um, social, economic institutions. Um, and then there, there are now many concerns about uh, the state security issue and also some tensions mm -hmm. internationally. So how uh, we can facilitate cooperation in sharing data, exchange data, mm -hmm. at the same time, addressing all the concerns about uh, mm -hmm. privacy mm -hmm. and security in Asia. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, thank you very much. I have two points. Uh, the first one is uh, the framework of Asia. From framework of Asia is very, very, I think it's uh, important. For for example, in, in, in Asia, the, for example, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, China, is uh, and also Singapore, uh, are, are very active for the digital uh, technology and the digital infrastructure. But, but we tend to uh, collaborate with Europe, Europe and the uh, United States. But, uh, but, but uh, I think that Asia is, the framework of Asia is very important. So for example, the, the Europe, Europe are a very good framework of EU, the, the United of uh, European countries. And also we need an uh, Asian framework is very important. So the first three, we should deal with uh, the four, the, for, for example, the, with Japan data space, then next to Asian data space is, I think, very important. So the framework of Asia. And the second point is uh, open data is very important in the, the first step uh, because uh, now is unfortunately the this is not the age of uh, globalization, but uh, now the age of the decoupling, the very, very difficult. And uh, so very difficult situation now. So in this uh, difficult situation, open open is very good for for, for the activity. So, so the, for example, the top secret data or the very difficult data, the personal data is very, very difficult. Uh, so so, so the, the, from the first steps, the open data, the collaboration uh, dealing with the open data uh, is very good as a first step for the data space. So, so my belief that we would like to start the collaboration of uh, Asian open data uh, space is, I think, very important for, for, the, for the first step. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so just uh, for, uh, asking um, th that, that point uh, further, um, is there any already initiative to start creating mm. such an open space in Asia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah we have the, the last month, uh, we have a conference of the Asian Open Data uh, Partnerships, uh, Asia Open Data Summit. Uh, and now, now about about 10, 10 years, we have a framework of Asia Open Data Partnership. 
I think about 10, yeah, 11 or 12 country, Asian country are joining in this partnership. And I, I think the five, five, five years ago or four years ago, I think in, in Tokyo, our University of Tokyo are hosting <laughs> such kind of summit. And the, the, this year, they're hosted by the uh, yeah, Ma Malaysia. And, and many, many countries are hosting year by year. So we have a, a Asian yeah, yeah, data, open data partnership. I think this is an example for such kind of organization. Uh, for 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 dealing with the open data space in Asia. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I think now the time is up. Um, so thank you very much, Professor Kosizuka, for a um, really excellent and stimulating talk. And uh, I think there are many issues we can discuss further um, uh, during and after this conference. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, and thank you very much, Yadime Sensei. Thank you very much. Thank you.